Good morning and welcome. In a few moments we will begin our service and before then I just invite you to make sure that your phone is either switched off or on silent, please. Thank you.
welcome. We meet in the presence of God who knows our needs, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Thank you for being here today, either watching online or here in All Saints, being part of this journey of farewell, of celebration and remembrance. And thank you for being part of Harry's life. We meet here together to give thanks and to celebrate the earthly life of Harry Roy Warren Northam, a precious child, brother, grandchild, and friend. We meet here to support Nicole and Mark, Archie, Elizabeth, and Charlie, and to support each other in our sorrow. And we meet here to commend Harry into eternal peace. The uniqueness of each human life is the basis of our grief when we are bereaved. The shock and apparent catastrophe of death, especially of someone so young, cannot be altered. But it can be transformed by love. When we look through the whole of history, there is no one like Harry. There has never been another Harry, and there never will be another Harry. His uniqueness is what makes him so special and precious. He will still live on in all our memories. And though no longer a visible part of our lives, he will always remain a member of your family and of your circles. And the influence he has had on you will remain. The value of life is not measured in its length, but its effects on others, especially those who have loved us and those whom we have loved. Harry was baptised here in All Saints. Harry, we gave you your name to know that you were and you still are a child of God. You are a precious part of your family forever and ever. We promise never to forget you as long as we live. You are known and you are loved by us and by God. May God bless you with peace for all eternity. A special prayer for ourselves. Loving God, in all our questions and confusion, help us to trust that love shines in our lives. Help us to trust that Harry is safe in your loving arms. Help us to know your comfort in our grief and the knowledge of your unfailing love. Amen. And so we pay tribute to Harry First of all, with a tribute from Nicole, Harry's mum. I wanted to stand before you all today and say a few words about our beloved Harry. But if we're watching this video, it means my emotions have taken over and this video is what I can manage. It is so important for me to say out loud to everyone how proud Mark and I are of Harry. 
How very proud we are to be the parents of such a kind and caring young man. It fills me with so much happiness that he was a truly good person. I have joy knowing that he was happy and carefree playing or hanging out with his siblings. I feel happy knowing that he loved his family with his whole heart. Harry was courageous and incredibly strong. I am not sure he would agree with that. He was also very humble. But seeing him in pain time and time again, talking and opening himself up to doctor after doctor, explaining how he felt and not getting the help he needed, I was amazed and in awe of how he carried himself through life with his pain. Harry did things I was not brave enough to do. He gave people time and he listened. He was in no hurry to finish a conversation. He was selfless. Some people are just too good for this world. When they leave early, they are meant to be somewhere else. There are no words to describe the pain of losing your child. The heartbreak and sadness of what could have been is overwhelming. But Harry would want us to live our lives, be happy and care about others. A very strong woman and dear friend said to me, some beautiful beings are only meant to be here for a short time. I find comfort in those words. Harry will live on through us in our hearts forever a gentle spirit flying high. I hope my darling boy is now saying, ah, oh, this is the life. And some tributes that I am very humbled to read on behalf of Harry's family. Since Harry's passing, we have received many messages from people that knew him, and the words that keep reoccurring are kind, caring, funny, intelligent smart, a beautiful smile. His eyes sparkled and smiled. An angel, the leave a party, and too good for us all. Our beautiful Harry was all of those things and more. A real thinker, sensitive, someone who cared deeply about human beings and animals. Harry cared about how everyone in the world was treated. He gave everyone a second chance. He sought out the good in everyone. He always had time for people, especially for those on their own. He would make an effort for people who didn't have anyone else to talk to or those who just needed to be listened to. Because of Harry's outward and friendly and happy nature, many people would not have known that Harry suffered from mental health issues. For many years, a dark cloud constantly hovered over Harry. Through his own personal pain, he would still ask how others were and would always try to help when he could. He always had a smile on his face, even if it wasn't reflected internally. Harry was very intelligent and did well at school until his dark cloud arrived. Despite this, he even got a part-time job working at McDonald's when he was only 15. 
When he left school, he wanted to work with his hands. And one of our proudest memories was when Harry completed his carpentry qualification. He struggled with the monotony of having to get up every day to go to work, but he was on a mission to ensure that he completed the necessary hours in the workplace to become a qualified chippy. He had various jobs over the years, one of which was to be a carer for a boy with autism. It was his responsibility to meet this boy who attended college in the centre of Melbourne and to make sure that he got there and back home safely. The boy's mother had initially failed to tell Harry that the boy liked to run at full speed from the station to his college. And Harry would make his family laugh, telling us how he had to sprint to keep up with the boy, chasing after this teenager with his cigarette hanging out of his mouth, laughing. Other jobs, whether be in local pubs or for a local gardener in Salisbury, were just to save up for Harry's next travel adventures. Over the last 18 months, he travelled to Turkey, meeting up with Alex and visiting Gallipoli. He went to Cyprus on his own to find work and ended up working in Rhodes. From there, he travelled to Malia in Crete. And on his 21st birthday, he actually visited the place that Nicole and Mark first met. He and his brother Archie also went on trips to Berlin and more recently to Tunisia. Harry went through his teenage years with his best friends, Alex Brown and Archie Gumley, the three musketeers, always getting into mischief, always laughing. He loved his boys and they loved him back. Harry had a thirst for knowledge and had started studying psychology at university in Melbourne. He had to pause his studies when he moved back to the UK. He restarted his studies this January with the Open University. We always envied his natural perfect student ability. He would cram and complete assignments at the last minute working all through the night, and got really good scores. Harry was incredibly proud to have passed his driving test, and even more proud to own his own car, even if the size of the engine was against his dad's wishes. A battered old Holden Commodore, but it was his and he loved it. Harry was always up for anything fun, even if it was edging on the naughty side. Fascinated by all creatures, whether as a small boy wrangling snails in his grandparents' garden, befriending stray cats and dogs in Cyprus, looking after his common garden frog called Gabin, adopting his bearded dragon, Margot, or even getting another tattoo of a different animal. Unless it was wasps. We remember when a swarm of wasps decided to set up home somewhere in our roof space and Harry was dressed head to foot in protective clothing, including a balaclava. He had two tennis racket bug zappers and he stood on the kitchen roof 
ready to take on the enemy. Harry was more than happy to throw himself into a stinging nettle bush to retrieve his brother Charlie's football. When his mum asked if he could pick up some lemons for pancakes that she was going to cook, instead of visiting a shop, Harry decided to save some time and some money by climbing up someone else's lemon tree as he passed by. Harry also had a passion for collecting signs whilst returning from a good night out. Whether that was the for sale signs or signs from construction sites or traffic signs. In fact, last January, we had to return under the cover of darkness a road closure sign. Harry was so gentle with animals, and when he asked his mum to pick him up one day, he also said, as a side note, I have a bearded dragon and a tank too. Margot, the bearded dragon, moved in with Harry. Margot then became Mango, when Harry thought that he might actually be a boy. Harry always had something on the go. Even from a young age, he'd be outside in the garden, digging, finding insects, climbing trees, or learning to play the guitar at primary school. And once he'd left school, he still played his guitar from time to time. Not many of you may know, but Harry was good at maths. He could add up quicker in his head than on any calculator. This was noticed by others once he was older, working on building sites or working in the pub. Mark was amazed at how Harry worked out the angles of the roof rafters that needed to be cut. Harry loved tattoos and doing tattoos. He bought a kit and fake skin to practice on. It was his hobby and his passion, and he would have loved to have been given the opportunity to tattoo people as a side job. He started teaching himself Russian and tattooed Nicole and Mark in Russian on his legs. However, when he got to the point to ink the word Mark, he'd had quite a few drinks by then, and so Mark was tattooed backwards. From his interest in travel and all things historical, he collected coins from different countries and some very old coins, quite a collection. Harry was constantly making Nicole laugh with his subtle, understated humour, either by things he said or didn't say, maybe even just a look in her direction was enough for them to share a funny moment. Mark's special memory of Harry was helping Harry build the new garden shed and then converting the garage into Harry's new room. Mark will never forget the time they spent bonding and laughing over the late summertime last year. The converted garage was named Hot Pips. The name Hot Pips came about when Harry would have toasted cheese and tomato sandwiches. His mum would say, Oh, Harry, be careful of those tomato pips. They'll be hot. She was always fussing over Harry. Harry's relationships with his siblings were his whole world. He loved them and was very protective of them. They came first. Harry was always the last to line up for food, always putting his siblings first. 
always taking the last pick of what was on offer. Even in Harry's dark times in Melbourne, he worried about how his siblings were. He loved his brother Archie. He trusted Archie completely. He loved the fact that his younger brother was taller and bigger than him. Harry and Archie would measure each other's heights and laugh that Harry would end up being the shortest in the whole family. Archie has some lovely memories of Harry from their Tunisian holiday, especially the great time that they had on quad bikes. They liked it so much that they'd book to go again next year. The very close relationship that Harry had with his sister Elizabeth was wonderful to see. They confided in each other, spent many hours talking about life, sharing their love of painting, listening to music, and watching TV shows out of Harry's hot pips. They were very protective of each other. He adored and loved Elizabeth, his little sister. The running family joke was that we would all feel sorry for whoever Elizabeth might introduce to the family and what Harry would do to that poor soul. Harry and his youngest brother Charlie are nine years apart in age, but very similar. Both interested in history and the outdoors, they also shared the same sense of humour and the ability to mimic voices. Harry taught Charlie how to climb a tree, light fireworks, and they used to do experiments outside with all sorts of things. Harry loved Charlie and couldn't wait for him to turn 18 so that he could go to the pub and have a beer with him. Charlie's fond memory of Harry was from last year when Harry caught a frog in the garden and decided to keep it as a pet. Whilst Harry was building the frog a home, Charlie was playing a game on his phone that had Middle Eastern music playing out loud. Harry thought the music was quite fitting for this frog and so Gabin, Harry's Arabic frog, was born. We would all have to find worms and slugs for Gabin so Harry could feed him. Harry was always laughing with Grandad Roy when he was a young boy. His last joke to Grandad Roy was to write on a package, Nanny and Granny. Granny being Grandad Roy, and that tickled Harry. He knew Nana loved him no matter what, and he loved her too. Harry generally loved being and was proud to be part of a wider family. He always cherished our holidays to England when we would be visiting everyone. He quickly became very close to our family when we moved back recently. We have so many funny memories of our many holidays together. Travelling was something that all six of us loved. It was our thing, our time when we all came together and Harry was happy travelling. We had a holiday in Queensland and went out on a catamaran to snorkel on the Great Barrier Reef. The weather turned on us and the boat headed to shore. The sea was extremely rough on the way back with waves crashing over the roof of the boat. It was too dangerous to stand and many people were suffering from seasickness. Children were instructed to stay on the lower deck. So Nicole stayed with Elizabeth and Charlie, whilst Harry, Archie and Mark were on the top deck, 
Archie clinging on for dear life, trying not to lose his lunch. The only seat available for Mark was facing the oncoming waves. Harry thought this was hilarious. Watching his dad sitting in front of him, getting smashed in the face by the waves over and over again. His clothes completely stuck to him. Archie and Harry laughed so much. We all thank the staff and the captain for the worst ride of our lives too, as we do being so polite. Another lovely memory that the family has is Harry and his siblings playing football last summer in the garden, all laughing as Harry threw himself through the air trying to stop the ball. Harry laughed as Archie stopped the ball with his big flipper feet without breaking into a sweat. Harry often spoke of having his own family. He wanted a soul mate and children of his own. He wanted and needed that one true love. Please never forget Harry. Please raise a glass to him when you say cheers. Harry, a kind, gentle, loving soul who has gone off on another adventure. So tired of the straight line And everywhere you turn There's vultures and thieves at your back Still keep some twisting Keep on building the lies That you make up for all that you lack But don't make no In the 
My friendship with Harry began on the first day of high school where we first met. And I'm not sure what it was, but something on that day brought us together. And at the time, I don't think I really could have comprehended the bond that we would develop or how long it would last. The normal teenage friendship does. You know, we have sleepovers where we stayed up till three in the morning, playing Call of Duty, running down to the surf boat to get slurpees in summer, and countless hours playing soccer. And Alex is also a big key player in our little friendship trio, and yeah, pretty much the three of us did everything together. As time went on and the three of us got older, we got up to a lot more mischief. And when we couldn't stomach it, we decided to mix it with coke for a concoction that we called diesel. Uh, we would skip class to go to school to smoke our first cigarettes together, uh, and then there was the parties we used which is honestly where I think we got our drinking tolerance from. We were always looking at the that would serve us while we were underage, and all three of us got our first jobs together, where I reckon we spent more time out of the back messing around than we actually did doing our jobs. And then there were the countless hours uh, and nights and at hours playing pool or poker, television and just chilling out. Even though most of this stuff we got to do was pretty immature, Sense of strength. Harry was a chief and he had to get a out of people, but more importantly, he was someone who cared for his mates. The amount of times that he helped me out. Whenever I was down and I had issues, whether it was related to family or girls or whatever else it was, he'd always have an arm around me and reassure me that everything was alright. Even though the physical distance between us grew as our teenage years drew to an end, I still felt I uh, still felt like uh, I had change. He always had my back and he supported me even when I felt like no one else would. We had a strong relationship and even though we may not have weeks or months or years, whenever we got back together, I felt like we could pick up where we left off. We'd never been apart in the first place. And this could be more true for when I last saw him in London in the new year of 2023. It was an adventure for both of us, Roman taking the longest pub crawls you could imagine. And while we spent a lot of time reminiscing about our favourite memories of back home in Australia, we also made plenty more that I won't forget. I may not miss his questionable tattoos, voice and clothing, but I'll forever cherish the memories I made with him. He played a big role in my years and I'm thankful that he was a part of my life. Harry, mate, I'll miss you dearly, but I won't ever forget you. You will all have your own special treasured memories of Harry. And I invite you to stand as we give thanks to God for Harry, for all that he meant and still means to us, for his love and care, his creativity and intelligence, his commitment to listening, his friendship, 
his partying and sense of humour, his uniqueness, his life, his gentle soul. Please stand. Gracious God, nothing in your life, nothing in the world as it is, nothing in the world as it shall be, nothing in the whole of creation can separate us from your love. With our love and with gratitude for his love, we commend to you. You shared your life with us. May we share eternal life with you. You gave your love to us. May God give his deep love to you. You gave your time to us. May God give his eternity to you. Gave your light to us. God give everlasting light to you. Freedom of the wind and sunshine, we let you go. Into the dance of the stars and the planets, we let you go. Into the wind's breath and the hands of the star maker. We let you go. We love you. We miss you. We want you to be happy. Go safely. Go dancing. Go running home. May you rest in peace, in fulfillment, in loving. May you rest in God's eternal embrace. Amen. <coughs> Please do be seated. <coughs> Our next song speaks of the next adventures of Harry. And I invite you to please sing along and think of Harry sitting on top of the world.
as we have gathered here to say our final goodbyes, we have been reminded of the fragility of life and also the depth of human connection, the bonds that tie us together, even in the face of parting. And it's in these bonds that we find comfort, knowing that love transcends the barriers of time and space. Harry's laughter, wisdom and kindness have been a beacon of light in our lives. So may we continue to remember the lessons he has learned, the wisdom he has shared and the love that he has shared. Harry's life was a testament to resilience, to the beauty that resides in the human spirit, a beacon of hope that illuminated the paths of many different people. As we close this chapter, I hope that you can carry forward the essence of Harry's spirit, his zest for life, his innate ability to bring care, kindness and happiness to others. His ability to be a beacon of light in sometimes a dark world. Be bearers of love in your families and in your communities. And in the days to come, as you navigate the many different emotions of grief, May you find solace in love, in the support that surrounds you, and may you find comfort in the memories that bind you together and in the love that sustains you. May you find the strength, comfort and peace of God in the days to come. And remember, it only transforms. As you leave here this morning, if you'd like to make a donation in memory of Harry, then please do donate online. The connection is on the back of the service sheets on muchloved.com. Or if you'd like to leave a donation at the back, then all the proceeds will go and various other charities that support those people who are suffering from mental health issues. Mind the Samaritans, Beyond Blue and Lifeline Australia. Can I invite you to stand for our final prayer? <laughs> May the God of love and peace bless you and console you, gently wipe every tear from your eyes and bring you healing and peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's all we have. You will find we need nothing more. Every step our 
Nothing less, only love. 